Hello, my name is Dr Tim Ferrero. I'm Senior Specialist for Marine Conservation at Hampshire and Isle of Wight Wildlife Trust. So we're out here today on the Farlington Nature Reserve. We're standing on the seawall and we're looking out over Langston Harbour. And it's a very exciting day because we're just undertaking our very first Solent seagrass restoration work. Seagrass meadows are really vitally important habitats. Not only are they just great for biodiversity, they support so many species, commercially important species like sea bass and spider crabs and cuttlefish that lay their eggs on the seagrass fronds. And they provide home for, you know, for countless marine animals that, that move in and out of them or live on the seagrass themselves. So a really important habitat. But they do one other really important function. They absorb carbon because they're plants and they act as a blue carbon store. We have a problem with too much carbon dioxide in the atmosphere causing climate change. And seagrasses are really an important part of getting some of that carbon back out of the atmosphere and locked away in the ground. They do this in two ways. Obviously they are plants, they absorb carbon dioxide themselves. But more importantly, they have this habitat function. A seagrass meadow slows down the seawater moving through it and lots of particles and sediment drops out and gets buried. And it's that burial of material from the water that is the really important blue carbon bank that a seagrass meadow provides. And we're very lucky in the Solent to have some of the most important seagrass meadows in the UK and internationally important as well. But there is a problem, our seagrass meadows are under a lot of pressure from things like pollution, from damage and historically we used to have about 95% more seagrass. So in the 1920s and the 1930s a, a wasting disease, a slime mould, tore through seagrass in northern Europe, in the northern Atlantic and reduced the number of meadows dramatically, so we think about 90 to 95% of all the meadows died out. And there's barely been much recovery since those days. Back in the springtime we started working on our project, the, the Solent Seagrass Restoration Project, and we then went out and we, and we surveyed all of the seagrass beds that we know in the Solent and in the Solent harbours like Langston. So we got all our information together and we started monitoring how the plants were growing and when they started flowering because seagrass are flowering plants. And so as the flowering season continued we began to see seed developing on the plants on special structures called spathes. We kept watching them until they were nearly ripe and then we went out and we collected seed. We estimated that we collected in the end about 30,000 seagrass seed. So that plant material was taken to the University of Portsmouth, the Institute of Marine Sciences, who we're working very closely with on this project. And they stored the seed while essentially the plant rots away and the seed is released. So we concentrated the seed that we collected. And then over the last two days, literally with a, with a band of volunteers from the University of Portsmouth, from Boscalis, from our own marine champions and from Langston Harbour Authority, we've taken all of those seeds and we've bagged them up 15 and 13 at a time into little hessian bag seed bombs. And it's those seed bombs that we have to put out in the field as part of our restoration. to transport well over a thousand seed bombs out onto the mudflats where we've basically plotted out two square areas and those are the areas that we are sowing our seagrass bombs onto. So at Hampshire and Isle of Wight Wildlife Trust we have our Wilder 2030 vision and a restoration like this is all about you know, bringing extra wildness into the Solent, into the marine environment. So we are trying to restore a habitat that has been largely lost, but was once absolutely commonplace in the Solent. We're trying to restore extra biodiversity to maintain the health of the Solent, all of the animals and plants that live there, commercial fisheries. 
and we're trying to enhance and recreate a vital blue carbon function for the seagrass habitat so that we can really use Wilder 2030 to also play a vital role in helping to combat climate change. We'll be back in spring, in March or April and hopefully, fingers crossed, we shall see some seagrass going. We benefit and the project really benefits from all of this volunteer help, but it's also a great way for volunteers to see what we're doing, to get the message about you know, Wilder 2030, about the seagrass habitat and its importance, and to hopefully really connect with what we're doing with the seagrass habitat. So in the future, when we try and really restore large areas, people are gonna have that sense of ownership and support for what we're trying to do and achieve.